In this video, we will demonstrate DNA extraction from blood using the Kaya Amp DNA Mini and Blood Mini Kit. The DNA extraction will be carried out in duplicate on a single blood sample. Please note that blood sample collection should always be performed by a phlebotomist. Before starting your DNA extraction, ensure that the area where this is being carried out is clean and has been decontaminated. This can be done by spraying the bench, the pets and equipment to be used with freshly made 10% bleach solution. Allow this to sit for 15 to 30 minutes and then wipe away any residual bleach, followed by rinsing with clean water and finally spraying with 70% ethanol. Gloves are to be worn at all times throughout the extraction process and change frequently, especially if coming into contact with other surfaces that might be contaminated. Also check that all equipment and consumables you are going to use are in place and that the buffers in the kit have been prepared. For example, the appropriate volumes of ethanol have been added to buffers AW1 and AW2. Your heating block must have been set at 56 degrees centigrade and ready to use. Before commencing with DNA extraction, please ensure to familiarize yourself with the protocol. So you have prepared the area where you will be carrying out your extractions and you will begin by labeling the microtubes with sample IDs using a permanent marker. We label the sides of our tubes as well in case ethanol comes into contact with the microtube lids. Mix the blood by inverting the tube approximately 10 times to ensure you have a homogeneous sample. Vortex the proteinase K briefly, followed by a quick centrifugation step, approximately 10 seconds. Prepare 20 microliters of proteinase K into each microtube. Prepare 200 microliters of blood into each tube. Do this slowly as blood is viscous. Cap the blood sample and put to one side. Add 200 microliters of buffer AL to each sample. Close the tube and vortex for about 15 seconds and this step will be repeated for all subsequent samples. Transfer the microtubes to the heating block that has been set at 56 degrees centigrade and incubate the samples for 10 minutes. At the end of the incubation period, remove the samples from the heating block and briefly centrifuge to remove any droplets from the lids. Add 200 microliters of absolute ethanol to each microtube and mix each sample by briefly pulse vortexing for about 15 seconds. Briefly centrifuge the microtubes Prepare a mini spin column for each sample. Label your spin columns, ensuring that each spin column corresponds to the sample ID. We usually label the sides of the spin columns as well, in case the ID on the lid is smudged by ethanol. Carefully transfer the mixture from the previous step to the spin column, taking care not to wet the rim of the spin column. and this is repeated with all subsequent samples. Close the spin column and centrifuge at 6000 G, that's about 8000 RPM, for one minute. At the end of the centrifugation period, all the filtrate should be in the collection tube. Transfer the spin columns, which now contain the DNA, to clean collection tubes and discard the collection tubes containing the lysate. Carefully open the spin column and add 500 microliters of AW1 buffer, taking care not to wet the rim. Remember to change your tip between each sample. Close the caps and return the samples to the centrifuge and centrifuge for one minute again at 6000 G, that is 8000 RPM. At the end of the centrifugation period, 
check that all the filtrate is in the collection tube. If there is still some in the spin column, just repeat that centrifugation step. Discard the collection tube and transfer the spin columns to clean collection tubes. Carefully open the lid and add 500 microliters of AW2 without wetting the rim of the spin columns. Close the cap and centrifuge at full speed. That's 20,000 G, around 14,000 RPM for three minutes. Discard the filtrate from the collection tube into a waste container as the collection tube is going to be reused. Dry the rim of each collection tube on a paper towel and replace the spin column. Centrifuge at full speed for one minute. This ensures that all residual wash buffer and ethanol are removed, which could affect downstream processes. Label clean 1.5 mm microtubes, one for each sample, and transfer the spin columns to each corresponding microtube. The DNA that was on the spin column will be eluted from the column to the AE buffer. Add 200 microliters of AE buffer to each spin column, remembering to change tips between samples. Incubate for one minute at room temperature. Centrifuge for one minute at 6000 G, that's 8000 RPM. Re-elute the filtrate transferring this back onto the spin column. Repeat the incubation and centrifugation steps. This repeat elution step optimizes the DNA yield for each sample. This completes your DNA extraction of your blood samples and you will now evaluate the DNA concentration and quality. For this, we are going to perform a couple of quality control steps. We recommend that you remove an aliquot of each sample for carrying out your QCs. A total of five microliters will be sufficient, while leaving the rest of your samples on ice. We are going to use a nanodrop spectrophotometer to determine the DNA concentration and purity. This will be followed by gel electrophoresis to establish DNA integrity. For the nanodrop, we will use 1.5 microliters of DNA sample and we'll use the AE buffer to blank the instrument because this is what the DNA samples have been eluted in. Samples are always spun down to ensure that the DNA is at the bottom of the tube. A controlled DNA sample is always included of known concentration. This is used to check that the instrument is working optimally. In assessing the DNA, while the concentration and the 260 to 80 ratios are important, it is also critical that the 260 to 30 ratios are good. The 260 to 30 ratios should be between 1.5 and 3. When reviewing the results, we can see that one of the samples hasn't performed optimally, while the other one has. If the sample was to be used for the genotyping assay we will be carrying out, it would require an ethanol precipitation step to purify that sample. The next thing we are going to do is to assess the DNA integrity, and the samples will be run on a 1% agarose gel. Loading buffer is added to each sample, including the DNA ladder, which will be used to run alongside the samples. Running buffer, in this case 1 times TBE, containing a thidium bromide, is added to the tank. The gel is lowered into the gel tank and the samples, together with the high molecular weight DNA ladder, are loaded onto the gel. The gel is set to run at 100 volts for 20 to 30 minutes. At the end of the runtime, the gel is removed from the gel tank and transferred to a gel dock system or trans illuminator to visualize the DNA. As you can see from these results, the samples are all of high molecular weight. This gel picture contains samples that are both of high molecular weight DNA as well as degraded DNA. We will now demonstrate how to dry down DNA samples using the DNA stable plate. This would enable the transportation of DNA at ambient temperature. This needs to be performed in a PCR hood or a laminar flow. 
turn on the PCR hood or laminar flow at least five minutes before starting. Aliquot the same volume of DNA across the plate. The positions of each DNA sample has to be recorded accurately using a sample recording template containing a plate layout. The plate will remain in the PCR hood or the laminar flow until the samples have dried down completely. The drying time will depend on the volume of DNA used. Approximate drying times can be found in the DNA stable protocol. However, the drying time should be monitored and the final time recorded. The PCR hood or laminar flow should be kept running for the duration of the drying down time. When all the DNA plates are completely dried down, seal the plate with a PCR plate seal, ensuring that all wells are completely airtight. This can be achieved by using a seal applicator. Close the plate. Each plate has a lid and place the DNA stable plate into a shipping bag. Place the bag and accompanying documentation, for example the sample submission forms, export license details, into a shipping box. To summarize, you have been shown how to extract DNA from whole blood, what the quality control checks entail, drying down DNA in a DNA stable plate and packaging of the plate with the dried down samples for shipment.